HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Baseball participated in the Division II State Championship and will open up the time capsule with some of our best of segments. But first, Marathon Elementary School hosted their first Flag Day ceremony on the new campus. <laughs> We are readying for our very first Flag Day celebration here at Marathon School. It's a center tradition, 25 plus years that we've carried over to our new home, and we are thrilled to be hosting this um, annual event at our new location. So uh, what kind of things can we see today? You're going to see children in our flag colors, red, white, and blue, singing, waving flags. You might get a tear in your eye because it's going to touch your heart. Um, just the joy and innocence of children uh, appreciating the flag is, is truly moving. We have our honor guard who has been at Center School for many, many years. They are here again presenting the colors and we're thrilled that they're still able to, in their busy schedules, they're quite busy, um, make time for us. So, uh, since we don't have a comment to march around, what, what are, we, are they going to march today? Yes, weather is in our favor. Thank goodness the spring's been quite difficult. We will march along the sidewalks of our school. We are fortunate that now at our new building, we have sidewalks around our school. We will have parents line the sidewalks. Children will be able to march and wave their flags in the sunshine.
When I was here, I initiated the program, and uh, we we started a tradition, and they've upheld it ever since. And Lauren, the new principal, invited me to come back. It was a very, very surprising and pleasing invitation. And uh, so you started this. Uh, we were talking earlier, but there was a little story on how you got the program started 25 years ago. Oh, we, I went down to the cemetery in Natick and asked the caretaker if he could get me 750 flags after Memorial Day that they took off the veterans' graves. They were going to burn them. So they, uh, they, uh, they collected 750 and I gave every teacher 25. That's how we started the kids marching in to the, to the uh, Marines hymn and the Army Quezon song. And uh, the kids used to love it because they were marching. That's how sad. Now you saw today's festivities a little bit different than Seder because we don't have a, a comment to match on. So what did you think about today's festivities, how your program has grown? I think it's phenomenal. I think the kids did a phenomenal job. The teachers can be proud of the kids because they entered the auditorium beautifully and they left beautifully. And they, they uh, I think this is a program that will live with the kids for their entire lifetime. The Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce recently honored founder of the Hopkinton Independent, Sarah Duckett, with their annual Distinguished Service Award. Here's a look. A number of community members were at Faith Community Church Thursday morning as the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce presented founder of the Hopkinton Independent newspaper, Sarah Duckett, with their annual Distinguished Service Award. You know, it's hard to put in perspective what Sarah Duckett's meant to the community because uh, if you think about the kind of impact that the Hopkins Independent has uh, on the politics and sort of community affairs, uh, it's a pretty daunting, uh, it's a pretty daunting challenge to try to do that. You know, she she's been immersed in the community. She's proven herself as a volunteer over the years, appropriations committee, very much involved in the library, and then starts the Independent which has made a, a major contribution to the town. That's why she deserves the recognition she received this morning. So pretty much every way that it would be possible to touch a town and have an influence in a town, Sarah has found a way to do, and it's kind of been drawn, I think, to do that just because how much you care about the town. Many community leaders were happy to recall memories and to recognize Sarah for all the hard work she has done to keep Hopkinton residents informed with what is happening in their town. Most people appreciate the impact of a local news, of what the local newspaper has on a local economy. The fact that she sold rather than closed the newspaper was her way of keeping Hopkinton great. Sorry about that. For one, a local newspaper affects the cost of borrowing for the town's projects. The Independent affords local citizens the opportunity to scrutinize and interrogate the quality of projects and policies before approval. Lenders and creditors appreciate that. If she had closed the publication, the vacuum created would most likely be filled by national papers whose desire is to chase the national and global sexy stuff and might not give a damn about local projects. And so, yes, as others have previously said, the entire Hopkinton owes her and her family a debt of gratitude. Chamber of Commerce Chair Scott Richardson was also in attendance and happy to be part of recognizing Sarah as one of his last Chamber of Commerce duties. Well, again, it was kind of like an, a long overdue recognition of Sarah and her contribution to the town uh, over the past, what is it, 40 plus years. Um, certainly focusing on the, really the creation of the Hopkinton Independent as a really critical part of this community and having it continue after she leaves is a testament to you know kind of her vision and commitment to further communicating what's important to the town. And uh, also, I guess this was your last presentation as president of the Chamber of Commerce. Could you just talk about uh, what it was like to uh, be the president of the Chamber of Commerce and work with that group all these years? Sure. Well, again, uh, we, have a, we have a great group. And over the past six years or so, uh, certainly every year I'd say, well, who wants to be president? And nobody kind of stepped up, which was okay because we had, we have a lot of new members, a lot of great committee chairs, and they're really doing the bulk of the work. 
So, but obviously, after that time frame, it's time to get some new new people, uh, you know, up, coming up the ladder. And uh, Sir Christina agreed uh, to be uh, to be president. I think she'll do. I know she'll do a wonderful job. So, it was time. Despite the very deserved accolades, recognition, and awards, Sarah stated she wasn't looking for any of that. It's a little overwhelming. It really is. I. Uh... I don't do things for recognition. I just do things that need to be done. So it's, uh, it was fun, but I would have preferred not to have it happen. <laughs> After running the Hopkinton Independent for nearly 20 years, the memories will live on for Sarah. Memories are what I have now. <laughs> but um, I can't believe where all those years went. It's just so, so fast. You know, it's, the older you get, the faster they go. I strived to find an exit plan when I knew it was time to retire. I wanted the paper to continue. With the sale to Suzanne Farber and Dave Bagnan of the Community Advocate, I believe I have found that commitment to community and continuity. And I can't get away without recognizing the enormous support of my family. From the beginning, they built the desk arrangement, taught me how to use the computer. That was a big one. <laughs> I had never even used a keyboard before. Uh, they were available whenever I had a problem, went with me when I dropped off the paper in Worcester, and learned how the print process worked and kept me updated on what was going on in the schools. God bless them all, three kids and a very supportive husband. Coming up next, we'll let you know how Hiller baseball made out in the state championship game, plus a whole lot more. You're tuned in to HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. For the first time since 2004, Hiller Baseball made it all the way to the state championship. Right now, we take a look back on the run that was, and we also have highlights from the state championship game at Alumni Field in Lowell. Tom Nappy here with Josh Fisher and Steve Simos. Today's battery combination, the Hillers victorious over Stoughton 12-1. Josh, you pitched a tremendous game out there. Uh, how did it feel uh, competing in this sectional semifinals game as a sophomore and having a performance like that, six shutout innings, unbelievable? Uh, well, obviously it's a bit nerve-wracking when I first start, but as soon as I threw the first pitch, uh, I felt locked in. Uh, with Stevie catching, I'm always comfortable. And, um, and the first thing I did when I found out that I was pitching is that um, – I watched um, Brendan Kelly pitch against Greater New Bedford when he was a sophomore since he was in the same exact situation as I was, and that gave me confidence. Absolutely, and Stevie, you had a great performance out there, and you made a, one of the most tremendous defensive plays I think I've ever seen where you backed up the first baseman on that overthrow and ended up getting uh, the runner out at second for the double play. Uh, obviously, uh, you know what to do in just about any situation, but... Uh, how did it feel just to make that tremendous play that you rarely ever see in any baseball game? Yeah, I felt good. I thought it was going to be a double play, but uh, we are, we're always taught to back up, so that's what I did. I got lucky with the ball, and he decided to go to second, so our guys were there, and we were able to throw him out. So it was what it was the result we wanted, but in a different way. So we were planning on a double play, but we got it anyway. So, and Josh, you're a sophomore, and you have uh, – Many more good years to come here as part of this Hillers team. How, what's it been like to play with this group this season? This group is like family. It, it, this is like the closest I've ever felt with like brothers. It, it, we, we are literally brothers. I trust every single player on this team. Everybody is great. The defense is fantastic. The pitching is fantastic. And our hitting is fantastic. So everything we have is fantastic. And it's just brothers playing baseball. Absolutely. And Steve, this is the first time in your high school career going to the sectional finals. How does it feel to get to that level as a senior especially? Feels great. Yeah, we've been waiting a long time to get here, so we're just excited to play. Coach, you're going to the sectional finals. How does it feel to get to that level, especially this season? 
Oh, it feels great. I've been together with these seniors since they were little kids, obviously, because my son is a senior, and uh, they're a, such a special group character-wise. Um, they showed that again today, kept an even keel and pretty adverse uh, circumstances, a hostile environment in terms of um, the fans and things like that, and they were just awesome. They're just very businesslike, respectful character kids. And Josh Fisher was absolutely tremendous out there on the mound. Can you talk about his performance? I don't want to. I don't want to brag about him because I don't want his head to get big. Uh, but he's he's special because he has a beautiful makeup for a pitcher. Um, he's blessed with a very good arm, but he knows how to pitch. He knows how to keep his composure. He's a, a real competitor, and he's a wonderful, wonderful kid. He's he's a funny dude. Um, couldn't be happier for him. And I, I know you uh, don't want to give your uh, son too much credit, but what was running through your head when you saw that tremendous double play that he made? That was unbelievable where he backed up the first baseman through the runner out going to second. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. He's the catcher. So he's supposed to do that. So that wasn't that much of a play. Unfortunately, his at-bat was the only one. They said he hit the ball well to right field, but I, the only at-bat of the game I didn't see because I was talking to Josh. Um, but yeah, I'm ha he does. He did his job. That's that's um, that's what he's supposed to do. He's a captain and a senior, and a catcher. And your offense really came alive today. Could you just talk about uh, how the bats got going today? Yeah, we have a um, we have a little expression that we had lately that uh, our seven will come if they stay with their plan because they really have a good mindset at the plate. They're, they're, they have ability, but they have a good mindset. And most of hitting is about approach. Uh, and the belief that our seven will come, that will our big inning is what we mean by that. And the last two days we've had that big inning, and that that's really disheartening for another team. Hey, coach, I've heard that you got Westwood in the sectional finals. Uh, can you talk about your upcoming opponent? Really interesting. Um, I think they're extremely well coached. He's a really good guy. Uh, but what's very funny about it is probably the two worst baseball games I've ever seen are games against Westwood. We were horrible, and they beat us, and they were horrible. And we were equally horrible, and we beat them. So both teams, I think, think the other team stinks, uh, and both teams are talented. So it's really interesting. I, I have a feeling both teams will play uh, really well, and it'll be a low-scoring, well-played game. Um, but it is funny. Those were our two most horrific games for both teams. I think their coach would agree. So we're looking forward to it. The first-seeded Hopkinton Hillers battled the seventh-seeded Westwood Wolverines in the Division II South sectional finals this past Saturday. The game took place at the home of the Brockton Rocks, Campanelli Stadium. Bottom of the third, Ben McKenzie put the first run of the game on the board. Hit in the air to the wall. This is very deep, and this is going to be very gone. Home run, Ben McKenzie. I don't know if that ball has fallen yet. That might be back to Hopkinson. Oh, come on, Tom. one nothing, Hillers. He absolutely tattooed that ball. Left fielder took one look and decided to forget about it. Top of the fourth, Westwood struck back. This is up the right side, picked up by Glasper. It throws a second for one. Throw to first is going to be off the mark, gets away from Kester, and here comes a Westwood run. And we are tied at one apiece. This is hit up the line. It's a fair ball. And here comes Guarino to score, and the Wolverines lead it 2-1. to one. An RBI double for Ryan Shea. Bottom of the fifth, the Hillers reclaim the lead. It's glove side. And this is up the middle. That's going to get into center field. One run is in to score. Here comes Ambrosoni. The throw end is going to be cut off, and the Hillers reclaim the lead. And the fans are going wild. Steve Simos and Tommy Ambrosoni score on the two RBI single by Connor Kelly. And this is hit in the air over to center field. Could be trouble. And that is going to drop just in front of the wall. Here comes Connor Kelly rounding third. And he is going to try to score and will score. It's an RBI double for Drew Rancatori. Bottom of the six, the Hillers added some security. And that hit him, and that'll score a run for the Hillers. 
Cole Glassbird comes around to score, and the Hillers take the five to two lead. Connor Kelly at the plate, up the middle it goes! That's going to get into center field. One run is in, here comes another. Two runs are going to score for the Hillers. It's a 7-2 ball game. A two RBI single for Connor Kelly. Westwood down to their final out, trailing 7-2 in the top of the seventh. Hit in the air to the wall and see you later, home run. It's a 7-4 ball game. A two-run blast by Kevin McDonald. Give him the yak up, Brendan. And there it is! Strike three, and the Hopkins and Hillers are the Division II South sectional champions. The Hillers will head to the state championship Thursday night. The Hillers take the ball game seven to four and advance to their first state championship since 2004. Ben McKenzie went one for three with the solo home run and scored two runs. Steve Simos went one for two with a pair of walks and scored two runs. Connor Kelly went three for four at the plate with four RBIs and scored a run. The Division II state championship will take place Thursday, June 20th at Alumni Field in Lowell. The Hillers will face North champion St. Mary's. The game will start at 7 p.m. On Saturday, June 22nd, Hopkinton Hillers baseball battled St. Mary's of Lynn in the Division II state championship at Alumni Stadium in Lowell. St. Mary's was the home team for the game. Bottom of the second, scoreless game, and the Spartans got caught stealing. Fisher looks at first, and deals runner taking off, throw up by Simos, got him! It's just about automatic with Steve Simos throwing up to second. What a great throw that was for out number three. Caught stealing is Lee Pacheco. We will head to the top of the third. We are scoreless on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth, St. Mary strikes first. And this is up the left side and it'll trickle into left field. And St. Mary's leads it one to nothing. An RBI single for Lee Pacheco. Bottom of the fifth, St. Mary's tests Steven Simos' arm once again. Light lead at first, the one, two. Runner taking off, swing in and miss for strike three. Throw to second, they got him. Steve Simos does it again. Second runner of the inning to be caught stealing. And it ends up being a double play as Pagliuca strikes out and Cabral is caught stealing. And once again, Simos passes the test with flying colors. Bottom of the sixth, St. Mary's added a bit of insurance, however. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the left side. That'll trickle in a left field. It's a 2-0 lead for the Spartans. An RBI single for Jared Capilla. Hiller is down to their final out in the top of the seventh, trailing 2-0. Lined up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to fall in the state championship to St. Mary's of Lynn. Ronnie Sheamus strikes out and St. Mary's of Lynn hangs on for the 2-0 victory and walks away with the state title. The Hopkinton Hillers conclude their 2019 season as the TVL Large and South Division II champions, finishing with a record of 16-7. and Congratulations to Hopkinton on an incredible season and a terrific run. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. 
Take care, enjoy your Independence Day, and we'll talk to you again soon. On Saturday, June 22nd, Hopkinton Hillers baseball battled St. Mary's of Lynn in the Division II State Championship at Alumni Stadium in Lowell. St. Mary's was the home team for the game, bottom of the second scoreless game, and the Spartans got caught stealing. Fisher looks at first, and deals, runner taking off, throw up by Simos, got him! It's just about automatic with Steve Simos throwing up to second. What a great throw that was for out number three. Caught stealing is Lee Pacheco. We will head to the top of the third. We are scoreless on HCAN. Bottom of the fourth, St. Mary's strikes first. And this is up the left side, and it'll trickle into left field, and St. Mary's leads it one to nothing. An RBI single for Lee Pacheco. Bottom of the fifth, St. Mary's tests Steven Simos's arm once again. Light lead at first, the one-two. Runner taking off, swing in and miss for strike three. Throw to second, they got him. Steve Simos does it again. Second runner of the inning to be caught stealing. And it ends up being a double play as Pagliuca strikes out and Cabral is caught stealing. And once again, Simos passes the test with flying colors. Bottom of the sixth, St. Mary's added a bit of insurance, however. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is up the left side. That'll trickle in a left field. It's a 2-0 lead for the Spartans. An RBI single for Jared Capilla. Hillers down to their final out in the top of the seventh, trailing 2-0. Lined up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to fall in the state championship to St. Mary's of Lynn. Ronnie Sheamus strikes out and St. Mary's of Lynn hangs on for the 2-0 victory and walks away with the state title. The Hopkinton Hillers conclude their 2019 season as the TVL Large and South Division II champions, finishing with a record of 16-7,